Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today is the first video using the new We Are Memory Keepers foil quill system. So We Are Memory Keepers contacted me and asked me if I would review this fantastic new system. We saw it at Creativation, it won one of the new product awards and if you want to see it in action at the We Are Memory Keepers booth, you can see that in the top right hand corner. Well, what is the foil quill? Well, if you saw my video before Christmas using things like the uh, Spellbinders system, the Glimmer Foil system, there was the uh, Foil Press system but from the Gemini, and um, you can do that with your dies. Well, this is a similar system, it's heat based, you can't use your thermal wave foils and things, it's a heat based foil but this goes into your electronic cutting machine. So it goes into your Cricut, it goes into your Silhouette, it goes into your Scan and Cut, and it goes into your Sizzix machine, your electronic Sizzix machine. Um, and it will go into any of those machines, it has adapters inside, and then it has three different options. They sent me the fine tip, there is also a normal tip, and there is a bold tip. Or you can get an all-in-one system that has all three tips, and we'll cover that during the video. You can also then get um, memory pens that contain different designs. They sent me the Heidi Swap and the Holiday one. There are different options there. And then there are tons of different foil options. Here they sent me some of the smaller sheets. This contains 30 sheets. Um, there's five different colors in here and you get six of um, each color. Or you can get big rolls like this and then you have just one color on the roll. So we'll be experimenting with some of the different designs and you can do it on different papers. You can do it on paper, on vinyl, on leather. So we'll be experimenting over a couple of videos. Today will be kind of a getting started and mastering the basics. And then we'll also do a more advanced video of working on some thicker materials and making some home decor items too. So let's dive in and make our first project. Okay, so we're set up and ready to go. I have my Cricut and my Scan and Cut here to show you, and I've done a test foil with both of them, and it's super, super easy. It's really nice because it actually kind of embosses that foil into your cardstock too, which I think gives it a really nice finish, which I just love. And I did, as I say, do a test cut just because I wanted to be able to give you some hints and tips. And Greg was sitting there watching the Formula One, and I was kind of pottering around doing them, and it's just super simple. So within about half an hour, I'd done two, uh, two test foils, rather, on both machines. So you can do this on the Silhouette and the Sizzix. I think it's called the Eclipse. I don't have that machine. And as I mentioned in my review of all electronic cutting machines, the Silhouette for me is no longer the machine. I gave my Silhouette away. If you want to see my review of all electronic cutting machines, you can check that top right hand corner. For me, I just didn't like the um, Silhouette's new interface. I didn't find that the Bluetooth part of it worked that well anymore. So I stick with my Cricut and my Scanner Cut. And I think they're both great machines. And I go through kind of some of the differences. So what do you need to do when you get it out of the box? So this is, as I say, the fine tip. You want to plug it in for about five minutes before you're going to use it. You can plug it into the side of your machine or you can plug it into a power bank. I have this very pretty power bank. I will link this up in the video description for you. The reason I like this one, I bought it for Creativation, is that it tells you how much power is in it and it has a large capacity. And of course it's pink and pretty. So if, for me, it ticked all of those boxes. Um, you'll know it's working because it will have a little light that comes on. And this one's been going probably for, I'd say about half an hour or so. The bit that gets hot is actually the tip. That's the part you're going to want to avoid touching. And then in the box, you're going to get some adapters. So you have an A, B, C, and D adapter. And I got the instructions out so I could tell you so the A is for your silhouette, the B is for your brother, the C is for your cricket, and the D is for your silhouette. So we're going to start with our cricket. So we're going to start with our C. And it's really simple. All you do is take it and you screw it on like this. That's all you have to do for your adapter, just like that. And then you're going to pop it into your Cricut machine and you're going to pop it into the pen area here. Now your pen area usually has this little adapter into it. So what did I have to do? You have to open this up and you push up from the bottom and this part will pop out and that allows you to insert your foil quill just like this. And the other reason I like about not having this plugged into my machine is means I can trail this cord out the back and nothing is going to get caught. So I can just keep this at the back. And I have a little old chopping board that I use for watercoloring and heat setting on things. 
and that's what I've been placing it on. You could of course use your Tim Holtz glass mat, but this is nice and small and I can keep it at the back of my machine. So now I'm gonna hop on over to my Cricut screen, which also uh, fits nicely in the top of my thing, but you can see the, my screen on your screen now. So I have this um, drawn image that I have pre-sized ready to go. And all I'm gonna do is hit that green make it button and I'm gonna replace that on my canvas. So now you can see my mat on your screen and I already have added onto my Cricut mat this here. So I have my green regular Cricut mat. Underneath here is a piece of black cardstock and a piece of the uh, foil that comes with my foil quilt, those smaller pieces I showed you. One thing I did do was I cut around about half an inch off the foil so that it fit onto my cardstock because underneath here, the first time, when my foil stuck onto my mat, it uh, left some foil behind and it left my mat a little bit less tacky. So I found out if I trimmed that off, I didn't have that problem. And then they tell you to pull your foil taut and I'll show you with the scan and cut little trick I found for doing that. And then you want to tape it down. And I use my ThermoWeb tape, the one that fits in the Scotch tape dispenser, that worked really well. So that's what I've done so far. Now for positioning your, um, item that you want to draw on your canvas, I'm going to use that snap mat feature. So pop your mat down on your surface and then you're going to um, go here onto your uh, iPad. You're going to hit that snap mat button if you're using the app and then you're going to see that appear on your screen. And now you're going to hold your iPad like this, kind of flat above your mat until your iPad recognizes like that. You can see it snapped my mat. I'm gonna hit that use button and now I'm gonna hit touch. You can see how it's highlighted and I'm dragging down my brilliant idea. We're gonna hit continue. We're gonna turn our Cricut back on. And you can hear it searching for my Cricut and we're gonna select our maker. And so it's going to connect to my maker and then we're going to tell it that we want to draw this image. So I could have uh, dragged that image anywhere around my screen. And the great thing about that is of course that I can use up scraps. So I can use up scraps in my foil, I can use up scraps of cardstock. I'm going to set my material and I just set it as flat cardboard. It doesn't really matter so much when we're drawing. It's going to tell me to load my tools on my mat. So I'm just going to pop my iPad back up here really nice that I have a place for it and you want to load your mat in in the direction so here I have my gold foil at the top and I have my gold foil at the top so pop your mat into the guidelines this will be flashing so that tells you that the next stage is to load in your mat and then it's going to say go so the next thing that's flashing is my C button that means it's ready to go and I'm going to press go and off it's going to go. Now, drawing really doesn't take much time at all. So it feeds it in to make sure it's ready to go. And now it's going to start that drawing process. This takes around about a minute or so, and it's just going to start drawing. You can do solid drawings as well. We will be doing a second video about doing things on fabric and leather. And then we'll be doing a third video, which is going to be an FAQ video. So if you have any questions about the foil quill, you can drop those in the comments below and we'll answer those. Um, in a third video. So we'll do things about filling in on solid items, um, on some of the different foil options, what foils you can and can't use with your foil quilt, those kinds of things. So if you have questions, be sure to drop those in the comments. But you can see it's just drawing out my image. It will also give you a status update on your screen, whether you're using a computer or a tablet. I'm using my iPad. So we're around about halfway there already. You can still use up all your foil scraps. So you don't have to throw those away either, which is why I'm using a temporary tape rather than a permanent tape. And that's why I love that snap mat feature because I can move my images around to use up those foil scraps. And by having a photo of my foil on the screen, I can see where I still have excess foil that I can use. So we're nearly there. We have our full light bulb. It's just doing the words around the edge and we're coming up to about three quarters of the way down. And I have to say it's pretty accurate as well, which I really like. 
I also like the fact they've done it that you can use it in any machine. You can use this across machines. We're gonna use the same quill between our Cricut now, and then we're gonna move it into the Scan and Cut. We don't have to um, have a different quill. And there are three nibs available. This is the fine nib, then there's the standard, and there's the bold. You can buy those individually, or you can buy a three pack um, of all of them together. And then we're also in the Scan and Cut, we're going to use the USB designs. So it's ready to unload like so. So this is how it looks when it comes out. So you can see where it's foiled on here, underneath. So I'm gonna peel this off. We've got a little bit tight for space on the table. So I'm just gonna peel it off at the back here, some of that masking tape. And what you do is peel that off. As I say, I would keep the foil because you can use all of those scraps afterwards, which is perfect. There's no waste at all. And somebody asked me about Cricut mats. They always say, well, I got a new mat and every time I use my new mat, it tears my paper. What do I do? Well, I have a tip for you. Is always peel the mat away from your paper. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna hide the image because I'm gonna have it as a surprise. So what you do is turn this down like this, hold your paper and peel your mat away. This is a brand new mat. I've only done the foil, the practice foil, and this one. And you can see I have no tears at all. So are you ready to see? Here's our foiled design. Isn't it pretty? So we have a perfect foil design. I'll move it closer so you can see. Absolutely beautiful. So perfect foil, and it's embossed into that paper too. So it has a really pretty texture and a perfect foil. And that took us probably about two minutes to do. How easy, which I love. So you could mount that into a card, you can make it into a home decor piece, you could frame it, you could make books. And as I say, we're gonna do some on leather too. And I'm excited to do that with you. But you can also do it in your scan and cut and you can do any image. You don't have to do that. Or you can get some of the We Are Memory Keepers USBs. So let's use, let's do the holidays one. I did an emoji from the Heidi Swap one as my test piece, but we're gonna do one of these. So the Brother Scan and Cut has a USB port. I looked into doing it with the Cricut. You can do them with the Cricut too. You just have to use the um, software on the Cricut with a PC because you have to plug it into a PC, laptop, Microsoft Surface. Yes, Greg's smiling and saying, ha, ah, I got the Surface. Um, you have to do it with something with a USB port that you can plug it in and get the files off of it. With the scan and cut, you can plug a USB in and go in straight away. So I'm gonna plug this into the side and we're going to turn our scan and cut on. Like so. I'm gonna wait for it to say hello. And this is one nice feature about the scan and cut is that you can import directly from a USB onto the screen. So it's like so. We just tell it yes, you can check there's nothing in here. And then we're going to retrieve data down the bottom from our USB. And we want to retrieve an SVG file. Even though we're not gonna cut, we're going to draw. Let's retrieve, let's retrieve an Easter file because Easter's coming up. Maybe a bunny. There's a cute little bunny there. Now I have my brother mat already ready to go. So I have a piece of black cardstock under here and a piece of pink foil. So you always want the colored side of the foil up. And I said I would show you a trick for popping that foil on. So to do that, I already have one side of my foil taped down like this. And to do the other side, this was the easiest way I found it because Greg was watching racing. So there was no way I was gonna be getting help to be doing this. So I had to find my own way. So what I did was I tacked the other side of the foil, just catch the foil and then pull it taut and then stick it down. And then it's super easy. And then all I had to do was a piece of tape at the top and a piece of tape at the bottom. And then that was perfect for working with the foil. So that works really, really well. And you'll find that that's gonna work perfectly for going with your, um, your item. Now with the Scan and Cut CM350, you can put your mat in either way. With the DX, you have to put it in 
with the arrow facing the machine. So we're also going to be doing this to position it perfectly onto our mat. So there's an option here in the middle, there's three buttons down here where you can pop, one of them looks like the mat. And so we can scan in our mat, which is what we're going to do. And this is gonna allow me to position my bunny perfectly on the mat. That's something I really love about this machine. So is it ready to go? Start. So it's gonna feed in. The other thing is the Brother Scan and Cut is a lot quieter, I think, than the Cricut machine. But I really do think they do different things and it depends what you're going to do with the machine as to what the right machine for you is. So check out my comparison, um, depending what you want to do with the machine. Then we're going to hit the edit button. We're going to select all of our bunny, like so. And doing it upside down, I can assure you, is a lot harder than doing it the right way up. And then we're going to move our bunny and send him on our cardstock. Now, if you want to do resizing and things like that, you can do it on the screen here, but it's a lot easier to do it in the software. And then you can just transfer it wirelessly from your computer and it's super simple, but we're just gonna do it the size it's come in just to show how easy it is on here. Then we're gonna select that we're going to draw. So you can cut, you can draw. It does have an input foiling option too. It's not heat-based foiling but we can do that. And now we need to transfer our foil quill from our Cricut to our Scan and Cut. So we're gonna need a different adapter. The adapter we need is our B adapter, B for brother, C for Cricut. They've made that bit easy. So what do we do? We undo our foil quill out of the Cricut like this, and we unscrew our C adapter. Super simple. Then we screw on our B adapter like this. It's easier to hold one part, particularly if it's not hot, but this one's been on now probably a little while, but like so. So I would recommend screwing on your adapter before you plug it in. But you can do it the other way as we've done. Then I'm gonna move my power source over. I'm gonna pop it on the top for a second. And we're just gonna pop it in to where we normally would put our cutting blade. And we're gonna pop it down. Now. If you've been normally cutting with your scan and cut, your um, lever may be in a different position. If it's in position one, which is where you're normally cutting, and you now go to draw, so we're gonna go to start, it's going to tell you it wants it in position two. So if you have it in the wrong position, the DX is going to tell you it wants it in a different position. So don't worry about that. So, okay, I've now moved it to where you want it. And we hit the start button again, and off we go. I'm just going to pop my cable to the side so it doesn't get caught. And again, it's really quick and easy. And I love the fact, again, I can position it exactly where I want it on my foil. I'm intrigued to see how the bunny looks because I haven't done any bunnies yet. I've just done the emojis. How quick was that? So it tells me I'm done. I finished drawing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scan and Cut. Again, I'm going to peel this off. You can see where our bunny is drawn. So I'm going to take this over here just because I have a little bit of clear desk space. And I'm going to peel off this one here. And we're going to peel this off. So are you ready for our pink bunny? Isn't he or she, maybe she because she's pink, isn't she cute? Again, flawless foiling. It's embossed into our cardstock a little bit as well, just because of the way the foil is applied. And you have all that shimmer. And you can do it in any color, any size. It's completely customizable. You could do a hundred of these so quickly for invitations. You could make your own foiled invitations. You could make your own foiled thank you cards. You could make foiled monograms for weddings, for different occasions. So many different things you could do with this foil quilt. I think that this is amazing and it is so easy, as I say. I did qu two quick test foils just to make sure that it was easy and that I knew kind of the ins and outs before I got started, but it really was that easy. And as I say, 
use the scanning cut feature or the scanning the mat or use your snap mat feature on your Cricut and then you can use up all your scraps too. So there's minimal waste. You've got the rolls if you want to foil an entire mat rather than doing a small piece. So many different options and be sure to join us for two more videos we'll be doing with a foil quilt and I'm sure we'll be doing much more as well. Thank you so much for joining us here at Hedgehog Hollow today. All the links to everything we've used is in the video description, plus any special coupon codes we have here at Hedgehog Hollow. We have lots of exclusive coupon codes every single month. Some are weekly too, so you'll want to check every single video we do for those coupon codes. If you're watching this a little bit later on, it's not a new video, check the latest Hedgehog Hollow videos for our newest coupon codes. And of course, sign up to our Friday newsletter for all of our latest deals, steals. We send one out every Friday afternoon with the latest savings. Head on over to thehedgehoghollow.com to sign up for that newsletter. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of our daily tips, tricks, hauls, tutorials, and so much more here at Hedgehog Hollow. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you again soon. Happy stamping, everyone. Bye.